Thank you for the invitation uh, to speak. So I guess I'm the voice of uh, one of the big bad American companies uh, today. <laughs> so uh, what I'd like to do uh, this afternoon is really start maybe from, from what has been covered in the first panel, you know, this, this massive and, and quick trend towards digitization and really highlight how security plays in this particular context because indeed it raises a, a, a few new challenges that, uh, that we have to address. But, but let me start by giving you our perspective on where we see the, the payments market going. And of course, I will take a biased view, right? I, I, I will talk mostly about card payments, but I believe everything I'll, I'll be talking about could also apply to other forms of, uh, of payments. So I'm sorry, this is a bit complex uh, probably to, to see from the bottom of the room, but actually, you know, in, in a nutshell, we see, of course, uh, Digitized, uh, digitized payments as a big growth uh, engine going forward. And as you can see here on this slide, we expect this to triple uh, by 2020. And when we talk about digitized payments, you know, what, are, what exactly are we talking about? First of all, we are talking about browser-based transactions. This already exists today, right? We have, I mean, we have already spoken about different ways of, of paying uh, over the internet. Uh, of course, we heard uh, so far, uh, we have talked about PayPal and, and so on. Of course, credit cards are still, you know, in, in most of the cases, the largest payment method online. However, it's also uh, fair to acknowledge that the user experience is not as good as it could be. And, the, um, and, and there are indeed, there is still indeed some fraud uh, in the system, uh, as we just uh, heard as well from, from uh, Catherine. So, uh, so this is one area that we expect to grow further, but we also want to increase uh, the, the consumer convenience when paying online, uh, when the transaction is initiated uh, from a browser, an internet browser. Okay, first category. Second category is in-app payments. We also expect in-app payments to grow quite significantly. By the way, you have this slide in your deck, uh, if uh, I see many people taking notes, so you have it in, in, the, in the little folder. So, uh, in-app payments is expected also to, to grow significantly. And uh, we talked about Uber, we talked about uh, Airbnb. I mean, these are the traditional examples. We have um, uh, you know, a large number of examples of apps that really embed payments. And as we said uh, a little bit earlier this afternoon, you know, these payments become almost transparent to the consumer. Although we believe that the payment should never, uh, should never be totally transparent because the consumers expect, in particular in Europe, uh, they expect a level of control on payments, right? They want to have this perception that indeed they, they stay in control. So we don't believe that the payments should be totally transparent in, in the whole experience. And the third category is, uh, you know, digitized payments at the point of sale in a physical environment, right? We we see mostly the NFC technology as an enabler for this. Uh, we have now a massive number of cards that, are, that have embedded an NFC chip. Um, and we see in countries like Poland, for example, 50% of all card transactions are now contactless transactions. By NFC, by the way, uh, this is near field communication. So these are contactless transactions, right? So cards, uh, I mean, cards are now massively uh, renewed with an NFC chip in uh, in Europe. Uh, terminals, uh, w one quarter of all terminals in Europe are now equipped with an NFC antenna, enabling contactless payments. And of course, what is uh, coming up now is payments with a mobile phone, right? Uh, so um, Alan al already showed what uh, Barclays had, uh, had launched. Uh, there are a number of banks who have launched their own wallet, which enable NFC payments, so contactless payments at the POS terminal. That's uh, one big uh, trend. The other trend, of course, as, as probably everybody knows in this room, is, let's say, digital giants launching their own application. So Apple Pay has been launched in the US and in the UK. Uh, Samsung Pay has been announced, Android Pay as well, and there will be more and more. So something that is uh, very important to understand is that going forward, people will not only use their plastic card any longer at the point of sale, they will use multiple devices. And smartphones are the most obvious ones, um, most obvi uh, obvious uh, at this moment, but we expect also a number of other, of other devices to, em uh, to embed a payment facility going forward. 
which leads to a big challenge from a security standpoint, of course, because if you have your card details stored in multiple devices, these are multiple points of compromise. Uh, and, and so I will, I will explain to you how we, uh, how we address, uh, address this. Okay. Now, just to also make a comment on what was said earlier on, you know, when we talk about this digitization, first of all, what is clear to us, at least, is that there is uh, competition in this space, right? Uh, definitely for us, you know, we see Klarna, so forth, uh, you know, um, as competition. PayPal has gained tr uh, tremendous market share in this space. Uh, Ideal in the Netherlands. I mean, there there are a number of systems that uh, that uh, that exist uh, out there. So we see our ourselves very much as a challenger in 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 many cases in this uh, particular space, right? So that, that's one point. The, the second point is, you know, the debates. Uh, okay, is it good for the banks? Is that the last chance for the banks or not? My view is that what is really at stake here is, you know, who keep the perceived value in the consumers and the merchants' eyes. And so, to do this, I, I think there are two main components. One is, you know, who actually controls the user experience at the moment of the transaction, and who sees the data. And, uh, and for example, there is a misconception about Apple Pay. Many people, and including banks, have thought, "Wow, Apple is coming up, so they will." They will, uh, you know, they will actually um, invade our space and uh, payments. Okay, we're done. You know, Apple Pay will will emerge. First of all, of course, Apple has only a 20 to 25 percent market share in terms of devices. But also, what's what's important to understand is that Apple Pay is a wallet, so it's a container, a digital container in which today payment cards are stored. So Apple does not see the details of the transactions. The banks do. Apple does not. I, I think this is extremely important. So the banks keep a very important role. Second point as well is that to, to, to benefit from the Apple Pay service, actually your bank actually needs to authenticate yourself prior to enrolling to the, uh, to the Apple Pay system. Right? So the banks keep a very important role, and in my eyes, uh, they will keep a very important role. Uh, but indeed, uh, it's important that the, that the banks uh, keep doing a good job at authenticating uh, their customers and, and at uh, preserving the trust of, uh, of the customers. But in all the market research we do, the banks come top of the list when it comes to, you know, who, uh, who do I want uh, a payment service to come from or to be offered uh, from? The banks remain very much at the top. So this being said, le let, me, let me expand a little bit on the, the secu security aspect. So. Um, and, and let me share with you, you know, what, what are the key principles that we believe should apply in this space. And as you will see, this is pretty much aligned with the, the PSD2 and the EBA guidelines uh, and, and so on. But so in, in, in payments, in the payments world, it's always a question of finding a compromise between convenience and security, right? The most obvious example has been for, uh, for internet payments. You know, either you would do a simple credit card payment or you would use secure code, so uh, a 3DS, 3D secure authentication. 3D secure implies a number of additional steps for the consumer. So traditionally, we had to choose between a <coughs> uh, few steps or more steps with increased security. The good news, I believe, is that with all these new technologies that are coming up, is that this era, you know, I believe will stop and we will be able to, con uh, to combine high convenience with high security. So let me show you the four principles that we have in mind to, to achieve this.